this uh, this psalmist is not some space cadet airhead super spiritual praise monkey do you know the ones well praise the lord anyway you know I had my legs hanging off and you know the, the, the wife's gone off with the milkman and the cat's died and there's uh, the, the car's broken down oh praise the lord you know no mate no 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 let's engage with reality you know clutch down let's put it in gear because uh, you, you, you missed the point what the psalmist is doing in the calamity that is coming upon him and, and the calamity that he fears is going to come upon him which is a more potent force altogether what he's doing is he's engaging with and addressing the problems of his time but he does so from the perspective of somebody who is fearing God and hoping in God and that's the key balance does so with an open demonstration of what it is that helps us to do what he's asking us to do in the first place which is to sing and drive back the darkness so we've already said that singing helps a lot and musical instruments help a lot and even shouting may help you know the the the, the, the war cry and, and the cry of praise are not that far apart we've covered verses one to three already well, I already said music helps it's not just a, an Old Testament idea that one the music thing um, this job being so hard what helps well music helps praise the Lord with the heart make music to him on the ten string lyre sing to him a new song play skillfully shout for joy it, it's it's something that's part of um, the people of God's consciousness in the New Testament as well this whole thing of, of, of singing uh, and stuff Colossians 3 15 to 17 says this let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts well there's a big one that's that's an important part uh, of, the, of the battle of the spiritual battle letting the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to whoa <laughs> oh peace is important then you were called to peace and be thankful we're supposed to be thankful how are we going to set about that Paul well here's how we, we strengthen one another spiritually in our times together in our times of worship and he says verse 16 of Colossians 3 let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns songs from the spirit all of them the psalms the hymns and the songs inspired by the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him the way you build one another up spiritually is by encapsulating scripture in song and encouraging one another with that and this is the means by which we help disciple one another and help each other follow in the ways of God. Sing about what? Concrete stuff. In verses 4 to 9 he says, sing about the wonders of God and his word, the way he speaks in his word. What's the word like? The word is like what God is like. God's word, verse 4, is right and true. He's faithful in all he does. You can't separate God's word from his character. God's word is like God is. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Celebrate. Fill your mind with that. I know people of this world are full of rubbish. And people of this world will treat you like rubbish. Give them half a chance. But God is like this and his word is like that. And he's the prevailing one. And look how powerful his word. Verses uh, 6 to 7. His word made the heavens starry host it was the breath of his mouth he spoke and it was done now, now that's a reference to Genesis God said and there was but then verses 7 to 9 we've got a reference to the song of the sea which comes in Exodus 15 after the redemption of God's people from Egypt when he bought a people and created a people so in verse 6 you've got rejoicing in the word of God and what it's done in creating the heavens and the earth but verses 7 to 9 you've got what God has done in creating a people making us his people and the references there are to uh, gathering the waters of the sea together piling them up in a heap is the expression well that's exactly what he did at the reed sea he brought the waters and piled them up in a heap the hebrew is absolutely referring back to exodus 15. puts the deep in storehouses well again the song of the sea is referring to that so there, there are these, these references, uh, waters of the sea like a heap, there's a reference to the deeps, which is phraseology from Exodus 15. Uh, God's control of both the waters and the deep, bringing both fear and awe into human beings as they stand in the presence of God in both passages. 
lots of links back to not just creating the world, but creating a people for himself. And we are that people. That helps. That sort of thought helps. His word is right and true. His word works in creation and in creating a people. And his reign, verses 10 to 15. His reign, verses 10 to 15. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. Because this God who has created is working to his plan and his purpose. Verse 11, the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. God's plan will stand. People purpose all sorts of things. But the purposes of his heart will stand through all generations. Rejoice in this God. Rejoice that he's your God. Because verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. Back to that idea again. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. And whatever's happening, he's watching his people amongst all the people of the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. It's great that God made. It's great to stand in awe of God. It's great to stand in hope of his unfailing love. Not in our own devices, not armies, not horses. But it's nowhere near as much use as being consciously under the eye of your God. Which you are if you fear him. And he considers our need. Fear him. Stand in awe of the almighty, holy, sin-hating, but covenant-keeping God. And put your hope in his covenant love. It's the, it's the covenant language, you know. Chesed. When? In the teeth of the things we're least able to deal with, when our strength is gone, we've got no hope of delivering ourselves. He is a God who lasts out when all human hope is gone. And he delivers from death. Now that leaves his people one logical course of action to pursue. There's no hope in an army, there's no hope in a horse. Strange expression, isn't it? You know, tanks and guns, think in those terms in modern. Don't put your hope in those things. Because God is who he is, because of his word, because of his reign, the consequence of that is you hope in God. We hope, verse 20, in, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice because we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Wait, rejoice, pray. So how do you find waiting? <laughs> it's a skill, isn't it? <laughs> it's not, it's a grace, it's a mercy. To be able to do that. Fascinating last week, standing around in the YMCA waiting for Her Royal Highness to come. Right. So we've got to be there by half past ten or something. I've got to be there by half past ten. She's, I'm going to be talking until five to twelve. I've got a bit of work to do in the meantime. I'm going to bring it with me. So I'm sat there downstairs. We're all in, I found a quiet place and it was the room where all the, all the sort of security was happening. So I just sat in the corner as if I was supposed to be there and, and did and it was fine. And I had a bit of a banter with the gentlemen who were there doing whatever they were doing whatever and biscuit and cup of tea oh you can leave that there that'd be fine as if I was supposed to be there and it was great it, it was nice but waiting was still difficult and then okay positions please so you're put in a place and she's going to come eventually and eventually she's going to turn up you know and take ages to get to you but you've got to wait it's amazing just watching how difficult people find it to wait if there is a God who is in control, who made all things by his word of power, who now eyes his creation and works it to a plan, we can wait. <laughs> and in fact, it makes it easy for the psalmist to say, come on, let's, let's sing to him while we wait. Because he's got it under control. Wait then and rejoice, because he's got it. He's got your back. Wait, rejoice, pray. We wait in hope for the Lord. In him our hearts rejoice. We trust in his holy name. And then verse 22, he's praying. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Wait, verse 20. Rejoice, verse 21. And pray, verse 22. Now that is exactly what we see our brethren in the New Testament church doing right at the point where their game seemed up. For example, in Acts 16, 23 to 30. There was this girl walking around behind the apostles in um, Philippi. And uh, she was walking around 
announcing that these men were servants of the Most High God, right? And it was disturbing them because she was doing this by, a, by an evil spirit, which this slave girl had, and her owners made a great deal of money out of her by fortune telling. And in the end, they just turned around and said, you evil spirit, just get out of her, that's enough. And she was delivered. And the owners didn't like it very much, and it all kicked off. And so, after they had been severely flogged, Paul and Silas, were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully and when he received those orders he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. This is the Philippian jailer. We're about to get to know him. And verse 25 of Acts 16, about midnight, Paul and Silas were trying to find the savlon to put on their wounds and having a little moan at one another and fear and justice and, you know. We're Amnesty International when you want them, right? And they were praying and singing hymns to God. That's what they were doing. And the other prisoners were listening to them. They're doing exactly what Psalm 33 models for us. Defiantly praising the darkness out of their own heads and out of the heads of anybody else they can manage to find. The others were listening to them. And suddenly, verse 26, there was such a violent earthquake, the foundations of the prison were shaken, that once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. Everyone's chains came loose. <laughs> Jailer wakes up, rushes in, sees the doors are open, imagines everybody's fled, disgrace and ignominy, draws his, draw, drew his sword, draws his sword, or drew his sword, depending on how archaic you want to be in your language, and is about to fall on it when Paul says, Stop! We're all here! Don't kill yourself! And the jailer calls for lights because in the darkness he couldn't see and he rushes in and he falls trembling and he says, he brought them out and he says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And the darkness is driven back. Okay, okay, that's fine. They're apostles. They're, they're good at this stuff, yeah? Does anybody here find this stuff easy? No, of course we don't. It's not you. It's not just you. We all find it rock hard and difficult. Of course not. It's a battle. This is where the battle is. This is where the focus of battle is. Not letting the darkness inside your own head. It's a battle. And that's why this psalm was written. Looking back on it, what do you think are the problems the psalmist is up against here? cares of the whole nation on his back. He's got foreign armies, he's got nothing to fight them with, he's got no horses or chariots and the Egyptians got loads. And, 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 and the, the, the sea peoples, the Philistines all down that seaboard and these people up here to the north, the Edomites and the Elamites and all the might, 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 all those thingy down on the right hand side. You know, th those funny nations around there. And but he sees it all in the context of the battle the faithful face in this world and the choices they have to make. And the choice that he deliberately and intentionally makes is to sing and to wait and to rejoice and to pray because the darkness is not coming in. And it is fitting for the upright to praise him. Otherwise, the darkness takes up residence in your head and fearing him and hoping in his covenant love fly out of the window and all is then, all is then lost. As the later history of the kings of Israel will only go on to prove. <laughs>